All right, uh, welcome back to a brand new video of the Target Individual Program, Target Experience. Uh, not even, I forgot to upload a, a video earlier that I did in the morning. You know, got a call from Pam. And she left for listening in the house by herself because she wasn't feeling well. So she called me and I thought it was my uh, alarm that was going off. Uh, actually, she called me and I looked at my phone and before I could answer it, they hanged up. So I figured she probably um, either pocket down me or something. But, you know, I went back to sleep and, you know, so I, <laughs> my phone keep going off, but I thought it was my alarm. And, um, but anyhow, uh, so a little bit a uh, while ago, uh, she went to the groceries to get some groceries and she came back. I came downstairs to meet her uh, with the shopping cart. And I talk about how uh, they can hijack your consciousness, right? So I thought about the hijacking of your consciousness. So as I was, um, you know, taking the cart upstairs, I had to come this way so I can use the ramp. So at this t uh, as I reached here to turn, Again, the hijacking of my consciousness looked over at this gray vehicle here, this gray Audi. And what was the first thing that popped up in my mind, right? It was CPS. Never mind the rest of the, the license plate number, just CPS. So CPS, again, for those of you who don't know, is, is a, it's the, <laughs> also the acronym for Child Protective Service. Right, so again, trying to use CPS as a threat, right? Again, I talk about this, how to send me a little message about, yeah, child, they'll take everything from me, like taking it with my kids and stuff like that, right? So this is one of the things that they'll do. So as soon as, like I said, as soon as they, I, I you know, they hack and hijack my consciousness, turned, look at the license plate, CPS, then they use the call horn. All right, so we got upstairs, and now, uh, mind you, all day in the MIPD started using their sirens, um, particularly early on. Uh, it was, I think it was like 4.15, so I called my son to see uh, where he's at, because he gets out of school at 2, well, around 2.30 2 something. Uh, he didn't answer me, all right, so I um, text his mom. I said, you know, hey, can you call Ethan? Right, so she texts back saying that his phone is off, and I'm like, his phone's not off because I call his phone and he's his the phone ring, he just and then he goes into voicemail. So, um, I call him back again, uh, he didn't answer. Then the New York Press Department shows up and start using the sirens, All right? So, again, I want you to understand how they condition, uh, and I had to have a talk with Pam, right? Because a lot of black women, black mothers, right, who are raising kids in a uh, we're there, they had a household, you know, there's no adult supervision for their kids. Listen, I went through the same thing as a, as a, as a, as a child, okay? <laughs> and again, you know, I don't fault my, you know, my mother, you know, she has to go work, right? But understand the dynamics is that when you have young kids by themselves with no adult supervision, it is a recipe for disaster, right? For the most part. Particularly when it comes to teenage boys, <laughs> right? Uh, and girls too, you know? And so um, she's like, oh, well, he's probably still in school. I said, listen, he's called me when he's in the school after school. I says, he can use his phone after school hours, even if he's in the school, right? Because it's not officially school hours, because he's called me from the school like that. So making up all this excuse. And so I said to her, I said, listen, you know, it's about respect. Right? It's about me, him respecting his parents that when we say, hey, when school is over, you need to text us, to, uh, text or call us to let us know where you're at, where you're going to be. Right? If you want to hang out with your friends, that's fine. But we need to know. And you need to be home at a certain time. All right? You just, you can't ignore my calls because you figure you're having too much fun with your friends. Right? <laughs> you know, so that she doesn't understand. I, I Listen, I went through the same thing with my oldest Bryce and his mother and um, she's like oh you know uh, Bryce is a grown he's, he's a young man I said you know, he's not a young man okay he's 16 years old 17 years old he's not a young man but this is what they do they raise their son to be house husband and thinking that they're men they're not men all right and you know when she would curse him and call him all kind of names and all of this stuff and he's calling me and he's like you know my mother just 
say F you and stuff like that to me. And you know, I had to tell her, I said, you don't talk that way to him. What's the matter with you? And calling him her roommate. I'm like, I said, he's not your roommate. He's your damn son. Okay? But this is how these women are conditioned. Like I said, I've been through it. Let me tell you. I, I, I've been through it. So I don't know what kind of poison they put into his mind because, um, again, I barely hear from him. I call him, I text him. I barely hear from him. Okay? I think the last time I spoke to him, he called me for my birthday and I spoke to him one time after that. And my birthday was, you know, April 19th. And I spoke to him one time after that. I haven't spoken to my son in like two months. So like I said, what 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 poison that they're putting in his mind. Look at them over there with the, with the flashing lights down there, right? They've been at it. So like I said, what poison they're putting into his mind. You know, like I thought, you know, she did, Pam did the same to Ethan. You know, <laughs> and, and again, what they will do, they will destroy the relationship between their sons and fathers, right? Because of their evil vindictiveness, evil vindictiveness, right? And again, these women who these are women who have done me wrong, right? <laughs> these are these are women who have done me wrong. Okay. Right? And I didn't walk away from my kids. I didn't even walk away from that. Well, until I finally had it with uh, my oldest son, mother, and I just, I had to walk away from her because, you know, she, she was just, she, you know, like, I'm not going to be disrespected like that. And Pam is the same way too. And they train them into using psychological manipulation, right? Because they've made them blame black men for the choices that they make, right? And for the way that they are. They blame black men. Instead of going and get help, and fix within themselves, you know, they go from relationship to relationship thinking that a man is going to fix their issue. No man is going to fix your issue. No woman is going to fix your issue. You have to fix your own issue. How you do that is by recognizing that you have an issue and get help. Go get therapy. Okay? But we so like to get into this thing about God this and God that. And look at, look, at, look, at the, look at the majority of our, of our relationships. Look at the majority of black marriages, okay? Black women are the least married, all right? They don't even last long in relationships, okay? They, nowadays, they think that having a high body count, sleeping over with all these men is a flex. Not understanding the psychological damage, right? And the biological damage that they do to themselves. Because no elderly, none of, none of the elders are, have taught them anything, including their mothers, their aunties, and all this stuff. Because they have been conditioned to hate men. Right? Because women don't look at the totality of what's being done to black people, black men and black women, right? And having a, an understanding. And being sympathetic and understanding. Right? And being supportive. They're not like that. They want you to support them in, in their shenanigans. Right? Because white, liberal, feminist women and men have totally destroyed their mindset. Totally destroyed their mindset. Okay? So, you know, I'll tell you, just, anyway, so I get upstairs and again, she does this thing where she's like stare at Alyssa and then she look at me and say, Alyssa, like some sort of threat. And I'm like, you know, like I said, I wish you would come and knock out my door so I can show, I can show you guys what it is that they've done. Okay, like I said, I've been, I've been studying what they've been doing for the past decade, right? And I consider myself an expert, well versed in the curse of persuasion program, well versed in the covert manipulation, and what it is that they do in order to control men, in order to control, particularly black men, right? And destroy the relationship between black men and black women. These are wicked devils. Wicked, wicked devils. Right? And because our mindset, the Negro Pia mindset is that of the devils, they behave like the devils. Right? So when, it, when they look at each other, they look at each other with hatred, with scorn. Right? Oh, you did this to me, I'm going to kill you. Oh, you did this to me, I'm going to do this to that. But yet the white man can shoot you down on the damn street and you want to do his march. But you want to take up a, a weapon and go do something against your own brother and sister. Right? The white people can shoot us dead. Right? And we don't take up no damn arm. What arms we take it up? We marching and this and that and then and, and then we we hugging them in the court. Right? You know, it's like 
like I said, you know, we've conditioned, we've been conditioned into stupidity. We've been conditioned to be dumb people, dead people. When I say dead people, I mean dead in the mind. Because religious deadens the mind. Okay? We walk around with a dead mind because we have been manipulated, we have been uh, traumatized, we, you know, the shit that they do. And they know that I can, I understand exactly the totality of what it is that they do. And they don't like that. They, they do not like, they do not speak, uh, they don't like me speaking on it. Yeah, so whatever. So now when, when, whenever, look at these, look at these clowns. They get the sad boys and sand beaters. That's all they are. That's to tell you. Like I said, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of the reasons why you see the black people get wealthy we turn our back on each other because of these sort of programming and we don't understand what's being done. If I see if I didn't understand what's being done, right? If, if I like they said they wanted me to believe that it's in my mind. No, it's not in my mind. And they're like, oh you, you, okay, you wanna go by what's real? I'm like, yeah. You show it to me, give it to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can expose it. So remember, they will always use the system against black men and black women. Particularly those who they fear, particularly those who think differently, right? Particularly those who don't, you know, particularly when they uh, try to use certain types of women, you know, try to make me date a, uh, certain types of women. I'm like, no, you know, no. They're like, why are you dating her? She's ugly. Says who? Why? Because she got a, a full lips and a broad nose? We don't even see beauty in each, in, in each other in that. Okay, you look, you look at look at the statues of ancient Kemet. Go look at look at the, the ancient Greek statues, right? Black was the standard of beauty, and not the European, not I say European, but not the, the not what they call they, all, they have you know the Arabs have this thing where they, they there's like there's black and there's Negro, right? Yes, he was black, but he was a Negro, right? Like they only think like you know black people have broad noses. I mean Negro, I mean, who they call Negro is people who have Black people who have broad nose, full lips, you know, but they don't, they, they seem to not understand that black people have the most genetically, we are the most genetically varied people, whether it be through our DNA or whether it be through phenotype. You know, I just posted some images of, um, you know, you have these black women and black men who are whiter than white people, okay? Have blonde hair, blue eyes, but they're black. You look at their features. Some of them have, have straight nose, uh, 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 thin lips, but they're black. You look at the hair texture, they're black. Right? You look at, look at people in Somalia. Look at people in Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? Look at the Sans people. We, we have so much variety, right? But these racists will tell you that Negro people only have, um, you know, there's difference between Negro and black. This is what they do, so they can steal our culture, right? So they can keep making money off our culture. I understand you make money off of it. It's, it's the land you occupy now, through conquering in the in the in the, um, in the seventh century. Okay, so let's not forget. Again, they are when they know that you understand your history, they don't argue with you, right? And because they know the majority of us don't understand who we are, where we come from, is why they can do certain certain, certain things. Right? But when, when I start posting about their own scholars, right, of white, even white scholars, right, before the racism got in, in, in you know, before this whole Egyptology came about with, with the German racists and the, and the racist French and the racist British, you know, I'll tell you, you know, all these rare books that you couldn't buy because they were so expensive, you get them, you're available for free now. It, it lets you know that they know who we are. They know we are the original people. They know. We don't. We don't know because they've hidden a lot of things from us. And this is what they do in this, with this program, right? Like, the, the game. The covert manipulation, covert psychological manipulation, right? Cognitive warfare. They hide these things from us. But because we are not educated enough, when I say we are dumb people, we are dumb in our minds. We are dead people in our minds. Right? We are conditioned people. Conditioned not to think, not to be critical, not to reason. 
You know, just believe. Anyhow, I'll talk to you guys. Yeah. <sighs>